wellnesscouch.com, streaming wellness into your lives. You're listening to A Quirky Journey, the healthy family podcast with your hosts, Joe Witten and Fuad Kassab. Dr. Brett Hill, welcome to the show. Are you wearing shoes or are you shoeless at the moment? I am wearing shoes today. I've been yeah, practice adjusting on? today, so mm-hmm. I have my. I have, they are barefoot shoes, though. Does that count? Uh, yeah, yes, that count. yes, it does count. Right. The first time I saw you in person was, I think, at the, the wellness summit, and you was, you stood in front of a crowd of how many were you barefoot? Yeah, yeah, a thousand people. Yeah, was, yeah, and you're walking around barefoot everywhere. I was like, ah, oh, there he is. Yeah, I kept, getting, I kept having to like run away from the staff because I kept telling me off. Yeah, <laughs> I kept thinking. I kept thinking you were from Far North Queensland. I know. I, I have no shoes on. See, <laughs> when someone like Brett takes his shoes off, he looks cool. When I take my shoes off, I look like a hobbit. So, so <laughs> it kind of upsets me. But um, oh well. Yeah. But you'd be well. You'd be well acclimatized to come live up in the Adelaide Hills with me, where it gets really cold in winter. So you'd yeah, have a this, natural this advantage. Is, that, absolutely. Go. Yeah, yeah. I keep, I've got the back hair and the chest hair for it as well. <laughs> well insulated. Sort of, yeah, yeah. Good. Natural. Just have to wear a beanie. Mm. <laughs> Uh, Brett, uh, thanks. Is this the first time we have you on the show, isn't it? First time ever. No. Is it? How is it? Oh, I, I think apologize, so. Brett. I thought that we would have had you on here before now. I don't think so. I, mean, I could be wrong. I hope I'm not. <laughs> That'd be embarrassing. But I don't think so. No, so you, Brett, you might be right, but we're glad that we've <laughs> got you now. We're like, going to be introducing you in the intro of the show. So that will come before this, you know, after this conversation we recorded, reflecting nice. on how beautiful this conversation was and introducing you there. But um, <laughs> I thought you just did it when I was off air, so you didn't. I didn't yeah. hear all the things you said that's about right. me. Yeah, you that, can't that, interrupt that's and tell us. <laughs> <laughs> but there's nothing bad to say. So, um, want to kick off just with uh, something that's coming up very, very soon, and you and Joe are going to be doing this together, which is the wellness yeah. in Brisbane, and 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 some other guy called and some Fuad as well. Well, I'm not there. Uh, Kayama. I'm not. Kayama. Oh, okay. Kayama. Kayama one. Yes, yes, I am. Yeah. Phew. We're talking about the one that's coming up like in uh, soon February. We would, have, we would have liked you to be, be there, Fufu. In Brisbane. Yeah, but you've got other things on, so that's yes. okay. Well, look, I have my best friend flying from Lebanon, and he, is, he, has, he hasn't been here since I got to Australia in 2001, so he's never visited me. And he's taken uh, two and a half, three weeks off work. So I took two weeks off work to be with him during that period of time. And we're going to do a road trip up to Byron Bay and yeah, relive our, our youth together and just <laughs> camp by, you know, the fire and, and, and on, along Grow the your hair long, all, go surfing. Ah, it's all, it's all going to happen. So by the time yeah. I come back, I'll have dreadlocks and I'll be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. it's be amazing. So, <laughs> 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 uh, yeah, I'm sorry, but I really, I really wanted to come because there's like all my favorite people are up there. Do you want to tell us who's up there? I well, it's going to be awesome. So this is the first time we've done a live wellness couch event. Well, actually, that's not 100 percent true, but it's it's the first time in a long time we've done a wellness couch event outside of Melbourne. So yeah. when we first started, we did a the wellness guys actually did a, a show in the Adelaide Fringe, which is like this really big important festival in Adelaide and we didn't really know what we got ourselves into and we did a show there six years ago okay. and then just after that we actually did the first ever wellness summit was actually up in Queensland as well sure. uh, but, 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 and since then which is at least five years we have done all our events our live events in Melbourne and so this is the first time we're getting out and around the country which is super exciting and a little bit nerve-wracking because we we're organizing all the different you know details of getting it all together and we're you know hoping people are going to come along but um it's looking really good the tickets are selling great lots of people come along in brisbane because we've got a great lineup so big names you know joe witten she's amazing. <laughs> huge um cindy O'Meara is gonna be there kim morrison karen smith uh, who's there? Um, Audra Stark is going to be there. Um, Jules Galloway, I think, is going to be there. Yeah. It's, uh, it's nice just to get up with Jules. And obviously, you know, is Marcus there. Pierce is going to yeah. be there. Somebody from <laughs> Brett Hill is going to be there. And so um, it's going to be Damien? awesome. Like, all, crapped in, all crammed into one day. Um, Damien's yeah. not going to be there in Brisbane. Okay. Right? He's not okay. a surprise guest this time, but uh, okay. I'm working on him for Adelaide. I'm working on him. So uh, I'm not hard and trying to get him on there. out. But um, I think I think as Damo does, he he gets FOMO. So I reckon he'll see the Brisbane event, get a bit of FOMO, and he might want to come along to Adelaide. I reckon. <laughs> so I'll keep working on him. But um, 
So we've got an awesome lineup, and so it's going to be all jam packed into one massive day um, in uh, in Fortitude Valley, which is great because last time I went to Fortitude Valley was late night night clubbing many many years ago, and it was an interesting <laughs> place. So I'm looking forward to making a return visit there, and who knows, maybe even a bit of late night night clubbing after the event. That'd be fun. <laughs> the venue looks beautiful. <laughs> the venue looks amazing. Yeah, so yeah. Mira, I think it's called in, yeah, in Fortitude Valley. So yeah. it's um. Yeah, it's good fun. I, I haven't been there. Marcus is heading down, I think, this weekend. He's checking it all out and doing all the logistics and sorting it all out, which is amazing. And um, But it looks incredible. The, all the venues look incredible. It's going to be so much fun. So what? what's the um, – I haven't looked at the timings. When does it start and when does it finish? Oh, you're asking the wrong person for all the details. Okay. Uh, it, but it's essentially it's a full day. So it's, it's sort of 9 to 5, 10 to, 6, 10 to 5, that sort of thing. So it's, yeah. a, it's a full day. Um, obviously, you've got lunch breaks and, and morning tea and afternoon tea breaks. We've got amazing exhibitors who are going to be there, um, mm-hmm. food options all provided and, and lots okay. of different food options in the local area as well. So, But it's, it's going to be a jam-packed day because we've got such a huge lineup of speakers, so much information there. And uh, mm, it's going to be, it's gonna be fun. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, yeah. And, and what are you talking about? Yeah, I was going to ask both of you. Let me ask yeah. both of you. So, <laughs> okay, you are. Because you guys are talking, so I'm going to be, I'll, I'll ask the you. Interviewer. Old <laughs> yes. So, uh, Dr. Brett Hill, uh, can we begin by checking in on what you will be talking about? Um, well, yeah. I'm, I'm actually going to talk about kindness. So, oh. I've been sort of having a little bit of a focus on kindness, probably over the last couple of years, really, but especially at the moment. And uh, I was just uh, writing about it in my new book the other day, and I was like, this would be a good topic for the for the base camp. So, I'm going to do a talk all around kindness, um, and uh, predominantly kindness to yourself. So, how to be kind to yourself in terms <laughs> of the way you look after yourself, you know, physically, chemically, and emotionally, is what I'm going to talk about. Wow. Well, that's pretty funny because I'm talking about being gentle on yourself too. <laughs> hey, awesome. <I laughs> but that's okay. Be mean, I'm sure it'll be different because mine it's is sort of focused. Happens. It is. Well, mine's sort of focused on um, how to move forward gently with your health, you know, when you've nice. had lots of, you know, you have all the setbacks and you're just feeling like, um, you know, sometimes you beat yourself up a bit. Like, I'm not doing it right. I yeah. have to try harder. But yeah. maybe you just need to be a little bit more gentle and patient. So, yeah, nice. after all my struggles, <laughs> learning to be gentle on myself. Yep, yep. It's, it can be a tough yep. one sometimes, can't it? Mm. Um, so, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to it. It's, gonna be, it's amazing how often it happens. We have these events and we generally don't set a theme. Like we like no. to let people just come and share their, their wisdom and, and their absolute best truth of what they are willing to and, passionate yeah. about sharing at the time but it's amazing how often that just a theme starts up. to go through all of the speakers and they're all kind yeah. of on the same wavelength and uh, it's mm-hmm. happened to almost all the wellness summits we've had it's really fascinating the way it goes right, it? must yeah. be needed yeah yeah so, exactly so but you mentioned your new book that you're working on that was one of the themes can you tell us a little bit about the book that you're working on Yes, yes. So the book I'm writing, it's going to be called Rock Bottom. Um, and it's been, it's really all about my journey over the last, uh, I guess, five years of um, going through a separation and divorce and how that impacted on me and how that impacted on my family and how that impacted on my business and all of those sort of things. And just, um, you know, going through the whole process of, I guess, hitting rock bottom after that and, and losing my way and losing my identity i guess and and trying to figure out who i was again you know in this new changed world um and then i guess how i sort of bounce back from that so so it's all about that whole journey of self-discovery that happens when you have such a massive event like that happen in your life and um how you can uh you know use that to your advantage i guess so um who's your publisher for the book and when do we uh, it's actually, come out? Well, I'm, I'm writing it with Hay House. So um, I've been, uh, you know, liaising backwards and forwards with them and sending them bits and pieces. And uh, so that's been really good. Um, I don't have a final date for when it's going to be done um, because I'm being kind to myself. And <laughs> so I've, uh, I've stopped setting myself such strict deadlines and putting yes. so much pressure on myself. My, mm. my rule to myself is that it's going to get done. That's, that's my commitment to myself is that it absolutely yeah. will get done. And when it gets done, I don't know, uh, but I'm probably about halfway through at the moment. I think I'm up to about 30,000 words. So wow. it's, uh, it's ticking along quite nicely. How have you found the process of writing such a lengthy book? 
Oh, it's really interesting. I, I, I really like writing. And so I really enjoy it when I manage to sort of get the space and the time. And it's really the headspace as much as anything for myself. You know, I, I tend to be uh, you know, more of an introvert by personality. Um, and so I can sometimes get a bit, um, I guess, overwhelmed and exhausted by just being around people all the time. And, and I find it hard to sometimes um, decompress from that. Um, and so I find for me, it, it's, you know, finding myself in a space where I'm ready to write and be creative, um, is probably as much as anything, the, the biggest challenge for me. Um, so it's, you know, I've often got the time, but it's, it's getting myself into the right sort of creative mindset. Um, but I've really enjoyed it. It's, it's been, um, you know, it's funny, like I feel, I felt like I'd sort of learned everything I needed to learn from the process before I started writing the book. <laughs> um, but then, you know, as you start going through and writing the book, you, you find you, you sort of get to whole new levels of sort of depth of understanding of sort of the journey you went through and the process you're on. And um, I guess all the learning that's still happening as a result of it. So it's, uh, mm. it's been a really cool process actually, because I think I'm sort of almost like going back and doing all the same work that I did back then, but perhaps without some of the charge that I had when I first went through and did it all, which is nice. Yeah. So when was it that you did your talk at the Wellness um, Summit, was it? Yeah, so um, that, was, that was the Wellness Summit at the end of 2016. 2016, mm, um, yeah. and, and that was really the talk was based on the same theme and, and it was just, yeah. it was probably that experience really and how well received it was and the, just the incredible feedback I got from all of the people in the audience that made me think, mm. wow, hey, this is, this is probably an important story. And, and I guess as particularly I think the, the comment that kept coming through was that it was a story that they hadn't heard from a guy before. Um, yeah. that, you know, it wasn't something that guys spoke about. It wasn't something they'd heard about from a guy's perspective of how they, you know, the challenges they had, but also how they went about dealing with it. And that that was something that was really needed in the world. And, and you know, it was kind of one of those things where I got that feedback and I kind of went, Oh yeah, like of course, <laughs> and uh, you know, and so it just it just really made me say, okay, this is something I need to share, and um, and so I've sort of started working on it ever since. Yeah, so the, the focus there is sort of men's mental health, really. If you want to give it one kind, of, yeah, one kind of term, yeah, I would say that that's kind of the theme of it, yeah. And obviously, you know, me not being a mental health professional, um, it's it's really a lot about you know my perspective around that yeah. of you know what my experience was and how I went about dealing with that. Um, and so it's, uh, it's, you know, almost like part autobiographical, but then part, um, you know, sort of self-help as well. So that's sort that's, of, that's the direction I'm going with it. It's probably why it's so powerful for people because it's, it's from somebody who's, it's real. It's not like a, yeah. something out of a textbook. It's yeah, absolutely. And, and, and I think also because it's sometimes that. it's, sometimes people look up to you as someone who, you know, is in health and wellness and does a podcast and all that sort of stuff and kind of thinks, Oh yeah, they've got it all together. Like yeah. they don't have these problems. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so I think it's nice for people to almost sit back and go, "Ah, oh, it's not just me. <laughs> you know, exactly. these people have these problems too." And uh, and I think that's uh, something that you know allows people to really relate to that as well. Yeah. What have Definitely. you found is like these um, big problems that men face these days? Like, what are the top, say, three issues that you've come across? Because obviously, as you've started going down this path, you've had more exposure to the world of men's health or men. Yeah, health. yeah. So, what are the oh, I would... big areas that you've noticed? Well, I think one of the biggest themes that sort of comes through in the book is is really a theme of honesty. Um, and so, uh, you know, I think most men will sort of listen to that and think, well, no, I'm honest, but, but the reality is, I think a lot of the time we're not necessarily honest with ourselves. So we, we're not willing to be brave enough to be honest with ourselves about what the situation is we're in and actually acknowledging the situation and what we're going through, as opposed to just kind of brushing it off and trying to you know be brave and move forward and you know, mm. you'll be right kind of thing. Um, so I think the honesty to be able to actually sit down and, and, recognize where you're at um the honesty to be able to sit down and talk to someone else about it and say hey this is where i'm at and, and maybe i need a little bit of help um and and the honesty to be able to then go well okay you know i might need to do something about this and, and move forward so i think i think honesty is definitely one of the themes that comes through the book a lot um i think kindness is really a, a huge theme of the book is is about mm. being kind to yourself you know so often uh, it's very easy in these sort of situations for Anyone, but, but I, th I think guys do it a lot is, is to really beat yourself up about it and to really take it on board. And I mean, you know, you, or you look at, for example, the, you know, the rates of men's suicide around the country yeah, yeah. and you realize how often they do 
internalize these sort of things and, and really take it on board and, and just beat themselves up about it. Um, and so I think, um, you know, that ability to be kind to yourself. And, and as I said, you know, it's uh, recognizing that, you know, you're certainly not the only one in this situation um, and that, you know, that other people have, have gone through similar stuff too. And, and, you know, they're not, um, you know, they're not pariahs. They're not, I was going to swear then, but I won't. Uh, but, you know, but they're, they're good people too. They're just, you know, good people going through a challenging situation. Yeah. And, and so I think that that element of kindness is a really important thing that comes through. Um, and yeah. for the, the other thing I think is a big one that I talk about a lot is curiosity. So, so the ability to be a bit more curious about what's going on rather than, as I said, just kind of brush it off and ignore it, um, it is, I think, a really important thing for guys to be able to do. And sort of rather than, um, you know, thinking we have all the answers as, you know, men can mm. tend to do and, and not necessarily want to be told any other um, alternative points of view or alternative solutions or anything like that. I think, um, you know, being curious about, what is going on, why it's going on, um, what different modalities are out there that might be able to help you, what different people you might be able to talk to, what different perspectives on this situation outside of just your own might be available. So mm-hmm. I think those are kind of real themes of the book. Um, I feel like I didn't quite answer your question because you're asking about the challenges men are having, but I think that the challenges men are having are kind of the flip side of that. <laughs> you know, that the true. challenges that men are having are, is just not taking it, you know, is internalizing stuff, not being honest about it, not taking it head on. And as a result of that, not being able to come up with the solutions because the solutions are different for everyone. um, But it's that ability to really, um, to open up about it and to be honest about it that allows the solutions to come through. Mm. Wow. So it's such such an important work that you're doing and you're sort of placing it in this really kind of simple uh, um, approach for people where they can focus on these beautiful big topics like kindness and honesty. So they're not really specifically challenging topics in the way that you're presenting them. But if a person's oh. not in touch with them, <laughs> I, think, I think it'll be very challenging for lots of people. Yeah. At least I hope so. <laughs> but uh, the idea because, itself, so... The actions that I ask people to take honesty. around that. Yeah, exactly. You know, so I, I guess my point here was honesty and kindness are universal themes. People are very familiar with them. Yeah. So you're, you're not, um, the challenge isn't to sort of understand the concept itself, but to see in which areas of our lives we're not applying these practices yeah. where honesty isn't being uh, applied and where kindness isn't being shown to ourselves. So absolutely, yeah, with the practicality, that was going to be my question. Like, how do you offer practicalities around yeah. Things. That's what I was wondering. Yeah, it's, it's it's very much a thing where it's you know easy to say and harder to do. That's you know, they're, they're concepts where you go, oh yeah, I should be more kind to myself. Um, but actually recognizing, you know, so there's lots of exercises in there around you know recognizing what you say about yourself, you know, and, and getting real about that, and and recognizing where uh, you know what you're taking on board from what others are saying about you, for example. So mm. it's it's about using, I guess, your reactions to the world around you to give you clues about. Um, where things aren't working for you Um, and you know because you know it's all about your perception of the world around you then and understanding that um, you know those things people have said about you perhaps there's a reason why they're triggering you and it's not because that person outside of you is triggering you it's because you are triggering yourself and you know you're having a reaction to that because you are sensitive to that because you're already feeling that and saying that about yourself um, and so it's, it's about, you know, figuring out how we can use these cues around us to help, you know, n- nail down and drill down to these internal conflicts that are going on um, and how we can then work on those internal conflicts uh, because that's the way to heal the external conflicts. I feel like I'm being really esoteric here. Yeah, no, um, that, that makes complete sense. Yeah. No, it's good. Do you want to ask do you want to go? Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, I was just going yeah. to say, um, do you have some uh, tips for guys that you also talk about that really helps them to start pulling themselves out of the slump? Um, you know, like some practical things that they can do, like talking about exercise and things like that, that, that yeah. you find really helped you? Well, I think, you know, one of the things I talk about a lot with the guys is is loving themselves. Um, and you know, once again, you know, you, you kind of, you say it in those words and guys are like, Oh, what? You know, like, it's that kind of, like, it sounds a bit kooky, and it, but, but the way I talk to people about that is in a very, very practical way. So it's like yeah. saying, 
what do you do that you love? You know, what makes exactly, you happy? Yeah. Where do you find yes. joy in your life? You know, and it might be going to the football. You know, it might be repairing a motorcycle. You know, whatever mm. it is that you love doing, it's like, well, what if you loved yourself by giving yourself half an hour a day to work on your motorbike that you loved? You know, mm. like it's a very practical approach then to start showing yourself that you love yourself. Um, and, and so, you know, and I talk about how I, you know, one of the things I actually did was I went and bought myself a motorcycle. Um, and it was, you know, the total stereotypical midlife. Class. <laughs> I was going to say um, that. <laughs> but, but it was. But, but you know what? I sort of looked at it and I was like, do you know what? It kind of is a midlife crisis and everyone's going to stir <laughs> me up and say I'm having a midlife crisis. But I don't care because I want yeah. it and it's and what it's I feel like doing <laughs> and I'm going to value myself enough to give myself what I want without caring about what everyone else is going to say about it. Um, yeah. And that felt great. I loved it. Do you still have the motorcycle? I don't have the motorcycle. Oh, no, so what happened? I, well, it, it was sort of a, you know, the, the next phase in the journey yeah. was, uh, you know, moving yeah. into a different lifestyle where we moved up into the hills we live in a dirt road and it wasn't really a, you know, dirt bike. It wasn't really a, so, you know, we, there was sort of a choice between having the, the fun you motorcycle. You horses, or, didn't you? you know, yeah. yeah, selling the motorcycle, investing that in this amazing new property in the hills, which was sort wow. of the next, uh, the next yeah. journey. So I was, I was still loving myself. It was just the priorities changed yeah. over time. And, you know, it was, I guess one of the things that happened was when I started loving myself is that I attracted someone else into my life who loved me. Um, and go. that's, that's, that's kind of the way it works is that, you know, when, when you have that love for yourself, you're able to find someone else who loves you for you. And, and that's a beautiful thing. And, and so that was kind of what happened and, um, led to the motorcycle getting selling and, and the different <laughs> life priorities <laughs> and finding a home. The end of down the life crisis. Yeah. <laughs> but it, there's nothing more attractive than a person that's happy and, and, um, content in themselves. Yeah, yeah, I think so. And, and, you know, it's, it's not even necessarily about being happy. I think, you know, like sometimes I'm happy, sometimes I'm sad. Um, that's and that's true. totally okay. So, you know, it, I think, about, I think content is probably a great word yeah, for it, content. uh, is that, you know, someone who's okay with themselves, I think is probably how I would say it. Yeah. Um, because you know, no one's always happy. No one's always sad. And, and yeah. I think you kind of can't have the happiness without the sadness. Uh, and it's, that, that's part of that kind of whole honesty picture, I think is understanding mm. that, there's going to be goods and bads, and, and that's okay. There was a great Instagram uh, by Looney just came out yesterday. I'll nice. find it, but he, um, he had this beautiful stuff. drawing. It says, life's an amazing journey. And this guy's standing like, in the middle of a desert with, of course, the duck next to him. And, uh, <laughs> and then there's this big kind of sign with uh, these arrows pointing between the words. And the worst go like better than arrow to worse than better, worse, worse, better, worse, better, worse, better, better. And like life is just going around drawing this kind of circle of things are good, things are bad, you know, like, yeah. and they keep changing up and down, you know, and this is really what life is. And the, the best thing to do is to sort of meet, it, meet that with acceptance because you really can't control yeah. it. And if you yeah. accept life and you accept yourself, then you're in a much happier mental state than, than you would be yeah. if you were fighting everything all the time. Absolutely. And you start to realize, you know, this kind of comes back to the whole uh, divorce thing. You start to realize that some of the things you thought that were bad turned out to be good. And some of the things you thought to be good turned out to be bad. And, you know, it's kind of the way it goes. Like if I hadn't, uh, you know, if I hadn't go th gone through that situation, I wouldn't be in the relationship I'm in mean, now, which is just, you know, working so amazingly well. And so, you know, it, you start to realize that it's all just your perception and your judgment that you're placing on those things anyway. There's a story of this, some, this guy, I think it's a Tibetan story or something where they go up to this guy and say, Oh my God, like you, you've been uh, gifted a horse. Congratulations. You know, that's such a great uh, thing for you to get. And he's like, uh, we'll we'll see if it's a good thing. Yeah. We'll see. And then um, his son uh, got on the horse and he was riding along and he fell and he broke his leg. And everyone was like, oh, no, like the horse turned out to be bad luck. Like, after all, your son broke his leg. And, <laughs> bad. and he goes, oh, we'll see, we'll see. And then like the army draft came and they wanted to take all the kids to fight for the war and they couldn't take his son because his leg was broken. So, yeah. You know, the, everyone was saying, hey, you know, like, you, it's a, it turned out to be a good thing, that horse, after all, you know. <laughs> and he said, we'll see, you know. And then that's sort yeah. of how things happen. You yeah. Know? I really judge the <laughs> individual sense. You can't judge it at the time. Yeah, it's yeah. I think, I think it's like my favorite word now is like, maybe. Yeah. yeah. Isn't that awesome? <laughs> well, maybe. Yeah. You know, isn't that terrible? Oh, maybe. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs>
<laughs> so maybe, maybe we'll shift gears a little bit and um, talk a little bit about uh, functional fitness because it's one of the, these topics that I'm really interested in. I'm seeing a lot more people moving away from these typical uh, gym settings where you go into a gym and like you do your weights and uh, you do your treadmill and um, you know that's done in between. I don't know, one hour, your lunch break's gone for that and people get food back to their desk and people are moving more towards functional fitness. Maybe you can define what the term is and uh, give us a bit of background about it and how you see it differing from standard means of exercise like the gym. This does all fit in though because I know when you're really stressed and, and, or you have any kind of mental health issues, exercise really helps. So this does fit in. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. It does. I mean, Brett is, he's so, you know, multi-talented and like, I want to cover yeah. all different topics. That he... <laughs> cover everything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, no, it, it's true. Cause it does really help de-stress. You know, when you move your body, it helps fire nerve endings within your body that send messages back to your brain and help your brain to release dopamine and serotonin. So, yeah. you know, movement is great. And I think, you know, as much as I love talking about functional fitness and, you know, I can really nerd out on different fitness styles and different ways of doing it and, you know, all that sort of stuff. I, I think just encouraging people to move is really important. Mm. So, you know, start where you're at and figure out what you love and whatever that is, get moving is, is a great place to start. But, you know, if you really want to then, you know, push that envelope a little bit and take it to the next level, then you can start making your movement a little bit more functional. And, you know, functional fitness to me means that I'm capable, you know. So, mm-hmm. uh, you know, when I think of functional fitness, what I think of is like helping a friend move house or picking my kids up and putting them on my shoulder when we're going for a hike or, you know, a friend saying, hey, do you want to go rock climbing? And I go, yeah, sure, no worries. Like it, it's, it's the idea that, oh, you know, just recently Steph and I, we're picking up a, uh, an old shed off of gum tree that we wanted to take home for our horse to make a little shelter for our horse. And, and we were picking up this shed and loading it up onto the roof of my four wheel drive um, so that we could tie it down and take it home. You know, it's like stuff like that is when I think, Hey, this is cool. I'm glad I do functional fitness uh, yeah. because functional fitness is really all about capability in the real world. You know, it's like, it's not the, you know, you go to the gym and you see the, uh, you know, the bicep curl, seat where you, you know you sit on the seat and you lock in your arm and you literally move nothing except your bicep and you kind of yeah. go like when are you ever going to do that in the real world and yeah. you know even if that does give you a big bicep like aside from maybe picking up girls at the nightclub like what's the point of it because <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> if you have a bicep and nothing else to stabilize your body then you're going to be able to pick up something huge with your bicep but none of the rest of your body is going to be capable of dealing with that the weight you're lifting with your bicep and you're going to mm-hmm. cause yourself problems so for me functional fitness is all about just being capable in the real world and so it involves doing more um, you know, whole body movements. And, and, you know, I mean, I do do that in quite a, I guess, quote unquote, typical gym setting in that I do do CrossFit, you know, but somewhere mm-hmm. between one and four times a week, depending on how I'm feeling and how kind I'm being to myself and listening to my body and all those sort of things. And, mm-hmm. and I love CrossFit because it is it's very varied and we do a whole range of activities. And, and I really enjoy the intensity of the exercise and the combination of cardiovascular stuff with high resistance stuff and weights and all those sort of things, which is great. Um, But I also balance that out with a lot of, you know, really functional stuff. You know, we go for walks around home. I go for runs. We do, we've got a kayak. We take the kayak out. Sometimes we go bike riding. Sometimes we go swimming, go to the beach, you know, lots of just, uh, I guess, incidental movement. You know, we're constantly looking for ways to to move with myself and also with the family. Um, And so that sort of complements that, I guess, uh, slightly more sterile environment in the gym with a slightly more, you know, real world environment um, where we're trying to get out into nature and get outdoors as much as we can and get a little bit more variety as well. Do you get less injuries out of things like functional fitness and when you're a human being going throughout life? So have you seen as a chiropractor, people who practice functional fitness are showing up with less pain or issues with their back or things like that? Is that, has that been- uh, Look, yes and no, because I think like anything, you can do it well and you can do it not so well. (laughs) And so I think, you know, I mean, you look at something like CrossFit and there are a lot of people who get injured doing something like CrossFit. And so Mm -hmm. it depends on how you do it. You know, it depends on how kind you are to yourself, how much you listen to your body, how much you prepare in advance before you go there. So, you know, I wouldn't want to be going and doing CrossFit if I wasn't getting adjusted regularly by by a chiropractor, you know, because I know that, you know, I guess what I know is that 
I give myself the best chance to do well at all of these things. And so I do get adjusted on a regular basis. I am mindful of my diet, you know, so that I make sure I'm not having a really inflammatory diet that might be more likely to cause me injuries. You know, I'm mindful of my mindset. You know, I'm mindful of my stress and cortisol levels. You know, if I'm having a massive week and I'm just totally burnt out, then chances are I won't get up the next day and go to CrossFit. So, you know, I think it depends on how you live the whole rest of your life as to whether that's going to work for you. And so it's a, yeah. you know, it needs to be part of a really holistic picture. And I think the people I know who do it in that way, absolutely, they function really well, they're really healthy, they get less injuries, all of those sort of things. But there's a whole lot of other people who don't do it that way um, who end up with lots of injuries doing something like CrossFit. Mm. You know, it could be quite aggressive to the body, especially if the, uh, the yeah. instructor isn't very good and um, we don't have experience looking at your body and trying to correct your movements. Uh, absolutely. And, and, you know, how good you are at checking your ego at the door, something like CrossFit is really <laughs> yeah. um, because it's, you know, it's quite a competitive environment. It's really easy to want to try and push yourself more than you should. And, um, and so it's, you know, that, that whole uh, mental aspect of it comes in where you've got to, you know, I, I love the mental side of fitness. Like I really do. I feel like I always find I get so many mental benefits from fitness. And, you know, mm. one of those is seeing how far I can push myself and, and, you know, getting used to pushing myself a bit further and going beyond that point of, um, you know, when you think you've had enough and being able to push that little bit further and becoming more mentally resilient. Um, but then the flip side of that is knowing when to stop as well and knowing when to be kind to yourself and when not to go to the gym that day or when to go, go to the gym and humble yourself enough to lift lesser weights on that day because um, that's what your body needs at the time. You know, th th that whole mental side of it is just awesome. I love it. I saw a meme today on the internet uh, that said um, exercise is a celebration of your body's capabilities, not punishment for what you ate for breakfast oh <laughs> yeah. that's a good one i thought that was really great you know and yeah. uh, it's, it's sort of like you know if you take the attitude that you're trying to foster capability and to mm. give your body yes. a, a chance to be stronger and more mobile and that's your attitude towards it rather than looking at um you know how much you're gonna uh, achieve in that day how much uh, energy you can push your body to expand or um what yeah. kind of weights you're going to be able to carry on that day it's not as healthy as trying to say, well, today I'm just going to make my body a little bit healthier by causing these beneficial stressors around it. And um, Yeah. So well, it comes back to that theme again of loving yourself and kindness. You know, I think one of the other memes you'll see no, around is, you know, exercise because you love yourself, not don't exercise because you hate yourself. Mm -hmm. and, and I think it's, you know, it's coming back to those same sort of themes again, isn't it? And then once again, this is what I'll be talking about at the base camp is that that kindness to yourself and how you can, be kind to yourself exercising. Yeah, well, that's what I would like to ask you because um, that's what's been in my mind for the last few weeks is how do I exercise in a way that, you know, like I try to eat in a way that's really nourishing my body. I need mm -hmm. to be able to exercise in a way that sort of nourishes my body as well, especially um, for me coming out of surgery and recovery yeah. and I can't do much yet. What do you say to people like me who have to start off really slow again? You're kind of starting over in a way. Yeah, yeah. What well, kind of yeah, exercises do you Start off slow again. <laughs> you know, um, yeah. no, that's, that's really what it is, is start off slow again. But it's, you yeah. know, in terms of what type of exercise I recommend, well, it depends on why you want to exercise. It depends on what your goals are. You know, I remember having a really good chat with one of the ladies at the wellness breakthrough, which you were at, where mm. we were talking about fitness. And she was saying, oh, I, I really want to do CrossFit. Tell me about CrossFit. You know, and then I started talking to her about her goals and her goals were really to be able to like walk around the block with her grandchildren. I can't remember exactly what it was, but it was something <laughs> much simpler, you know, and I yeah, was like, I've, well, I've never been drawn to CrossFit, CrossFit to go for no. a walk around the block. Like seriously, it doesn't fit with your goals. There's kind no. of, there's not really any reason for you to go and do CrossFit. Let's work out well, what right. works for you, you know. Well, my goals are just nourishing the body so that it's healthy and yeah. having that strength and tone and um, energy to be able to like you say go and work in the garden go and yeah. do a heap of weeding go and go for Great. a walk go bush walking yeah. with the kids go climbing um yep. without feeling like i'm dying <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> you know Which so is it's perfect you that's know, so more my sort of swimming so, so then that sort of exercise what you want to be doing is is really body weight training you know is, is yeah. learning to move your whole body in coordination with itself um, and so, you know, there's some great things you can do. Well, one of the ones I, I recommend a lot to people is there's a guy called Mark Loren. 
Um, and he has a book called You Are Your Own Gym. Um, yeah. and he actually I think has my husband app. actually has that book. Yeah. Yeah, it's a great book. And he has an app yeah. that goes with it. And I recommend everyone to get the app because it's only a couple of mm. dollars. Okay. I think on the Android it's called You Are Your Own Gym. And yeah. on the iPhone it's called Body Weight, I think, or something like that. Mm-hmm. And you can actually just go into this. And what you could do, Joe, when you're first starting, is it has different levels. So you can go into that app and you can click on quick exercise. So you just do a quick one. Um, you can select the length of time that you want to do it for. And you might start by, I think the shortest increment might be two minutes. So you might mm-hmm. start at the two minute increment. Um, yeah. And then you might, then you can pick how hard it is. So you can pick the, the absolute beginner level to start at. And that'll right. give you then some, some beginner body weight exercises that you can mm-hmm. do. And it'll do 20 seconds on 10 seconds off for two minutes so you do four rounds that'll be it well, one round of each of the four exercises that it sets you yeah. um and that'll be that'll be a way to start but you know for you coming out of um you know what you've just been through then then you may not even want to go that far you know you probably yeah, just can start with a, a short Walking. walk around the block <laughs> yeah. you know? that would yeah. that would be where i would be more likely but i'd feel more yeah. comfortable with you starting there That's to be honest thinking, yeah. you've just yeah. got to start yeah. easy and ease yourself back into it but do you like walking yeah i love it Perfect. So, so it's something you love doing, right? We're going to make it easy for you. We're going to set a really small well. thing. So start less than doing less than you think you should, but create yeah. a habit out of it. You know, so make it easy for yourself. Set yourself up for success. And yeah. then as you do that successfully, then you can start to work on snowballing it and expanding it mm. from there as well. One of Jo's worries is that she's sitting in bed too much and her muscles are kind of atrophying a little bit. Yeah. That's just not moving. Um, yeah. Is this something to be overly concerned about at the stage? Do you think the body can bounce back? What's what are your views around that? Oh, the body can absolutely. I mean, the, the body is incredibly adaptable. You know, it, mm. it has an incredible ability to adapt and to change and to heal. So, yeah. you know, there's a time and a place for lying around in bed and letting your body recover. Um, yeah. And you're probably in that place right now, Joe. So, yeah. you know, um, I, I think I think you know, being kind to your body and recognizing that sometimes you just need rest and recovery, and that's okay. Mm. Um, and then, you know, when you're ready, when the time is right, then you start easing back into it and, you know, you'll be able to regain all of that function. There's, there's no doubt yeah. about that. Um, so, you know, your, your body is incredibly adaptable. So, yeah. you know, give, you, give yourself that time to rest and recover um, and then slowly work your way back in, you know, when the time's right. And, and you'll know deep down when, the, when it feels right. You know, yeah. I, think, I think if you really do, you know, be kind to your body and listen to your body, you, you'll know when that time is. There's a time when you're mm. sort of thinking, I should be doing it, you know, and, yeah. and then there's a time when you're like, no, nah, it's time, you know, and, and that's yeah. the, that's the difference. I guess you've got to, once again, it's kind of that mental challenge, isn't it? Figure out, well, am yeah. I just, you know, is it time to push myself or is it time to back off? And right. I think regardless yeah. of where you're at in your fitness, there's always mm-hmm. that conversation that goes on. Yeah. And I guess some people will probably tend to go one way. Some people probably tend to go the other way. Mm-hmm. And once again, being honest with yourself and knowing which of those camps you're in um, is going to help you make a decision about when's the right time to, to get started yeah. again as well. Yeah, no, that's good. Because it does get very frustrating when you've been ill and yes. you are laying around and you just want to be outside and, you know, you, you feel like all that work I did has gone to nothing. You know, it's like I was paddle boarding and, you know, getting my, my legs and arms were getting stronger and now they're back yeah. to zero again. But like yeah, you say, yeah. it doesn't, you know, once you start being able to work on it again, it'll all come back. It's just. Yeah, it's, it's definitely not a life sentence. You know, it can change, no. change, change again. So, and it will for the rest of your life. There will always be yeah. ups and downs and that's okay. You see these amazing women who um, start exercising late in life and mm. how their body changes into this amazing, powerful body. And you think, wow, okay, if they can do it, I can. Yeah. And you know what? Those same women are looking at your Instagram going, geez, I wish I could cook like Joe Witten. <laughs> but, you know, like it's so yeah, easy to look at other people's highlight reels and compare ourselves and go, oh, I wish I was that. But yeah. you don't really see what's going on on the other side of the fence. Yeah, of course. No one can cook like Joe Witten, I'm afraid. I know. I know. Oh, you too. I use the recipes all the time and I cook them half as well as Joe and it's still amazing. (laughs) (laughs) You have to have quirky in your blood, you know. If you've got quirky, then cook that way. If if you're not quirky. I'm definitely, I'm I'm the opposite of the quirky cooker. I'm like the boring cooker. So I'll use Joe to give me a little bit of kick along. (laughs) You know, I just have to say right here, I was just, 
What was that? Sorry. Brett was telling me I, I visited Brett in Adelaide for the talk yeah. on rewilding, and he said that you he's been using your tomato sauce like the uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, for every, all the dishes that he makes is. <laughs> it's yeah. all covered in tomato sauce. You got me. You got me in the good books with Steffi Joe because she loves tomato sauce. And so, <laughs> so when she moved to Adelaide, she was like, "Where's the tomato sauce?" I was like, "Oh no, you know, I can't go to the shops and buy like Heinz tomato sauce. That's no good. I'm gonna have to make some." So I found your recipe, and uh, and you got me oh, back in the good so books. It was good. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I was thinking before when we were talking about the mental health stuff, I thought, how funny. It's like. Um, I remembered that when Isaac was first going through his really bad stages, you were one of the people I rang first, Brett. Yeah, yeah, and absolutely. We, and you had a big, long talk to me about all the different things that I could do with Isaac, not so much the diet but yeah. the movement and getting outside and being outdoors and in the sunshine and on the grass and yeah. getting involved in sports. And yeah, um, no, we no, also did talk about, about diet. Different. Paleo yeah, we did talk about paleo and yeah, whether to do all the different options. Yeah, that's right. We had, um, and that was so helpful for me. So thank oh, you boy. because that all of that um, that holistic approach to Isaac's health made such a big difference to his yeah. mental health. You know, it's not it just it's not just the exercise, one from the other. not just counselling. It's all the things, and it was mm. yeah, very helpful for me. So thank you. You know, one of my one of my favourite wellness experts, who was sort of one of the first people to keep me along the journey, was a guy by the name of James Chestnut. He's a chiropractor from Canada, and he describes it like a plant. And and he says, well, you know, you can give it water, but it still might not be healthy. You know, you can give it great soil but it still might not be healthy. You know, you can give it sunlight, but it still might not be healthy. But it's when you do all of those things in combination is when the plant thrives, you know. And I think if you think about you know, the physical, the chemical, the emotional aspect of health in that way, you realise that you really need to give your body all of those nutrients. Yeah? And, and that's how he describes them. He describes them as nutrients, you know, whether it's physical, chemical or emotional. Your body has these requirements. And when you give it what it requires and, and take away what it doesn't, then it just naturally thrives like, all things in nature do. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Talking about this kind of natural approach to health and looking at the human body holistically, you're coming out with, you have already, you've released your natural running e-course. And yes. I'd love to talk to you about it because we're 10 minutes from closing the podcast. Yes. We've got to run. So I... I <laughs> but um yeah just wondering if you can uh, give us a, a little bit of an idea of uh, what the importance of barefoot running is and uh, is it even doable is it advisable of course like yeah, cool. the whole course because a lot of people would think <laughs> Like you need to have shoes around your feet so you can run. Otherwise, yeah, yeah. you know, you're going to die or something. So can you maybe Absolutely. talk about it? Well, it, you know, it kind of comes from, I guess, the same exact same philosophy we're just talking about. This idea that our body is designed to be healthy um, and that it doesn't really need any help to be healthy. It just needs no interference. And, and so mm. you know, when I started thinking about running the same way, you know, I'd been in orthotics for about 17 years because I'd had knee pain when I was younger. And, you know, people kept saying to me, well, running's not good for you. And it just never made sense to me. Like it was just this idea that running the most natural thing in the world could be bad for me. I was like, what, what sort of an evolutionary well, what sort of evolution could have led to the idea that a human body evolved not being good at running when that was a primal requirement in order to be able to catch food or to you know, yeah. escape predators? It just never made sense to me. And so, um, you know, I guess I started researching more into it and just realized that, well, there was a there was a natural way that the body was designed to move and that, you know, when you look at kids and you see them running, they really move in that way and, and they find running effortless. They'll run around and around playing chasey without seemingly getting tired, without seemingly getting injured. Um, yet as we get into adulthood, we seem to have all these problems with running. And so I started just getting really curious about it. And the more I learned about it, the more it made sense that, you know, we were designed to run not in these big built up shoes with arch support and raised up heels and, and all this other stuff that was going on. We'd really evolved uh, much as we'd evolved to eat a you know, paleo diet. We'd evolved to um, move without shoes on. Uh, and so um, I started getting curious about this whole barefoot running idea. And, and you know, my course is called The Art of Natural Running uh, because it's sort of, I've moved a little bit away from the whole uh, barefoot running as a necessity because, you know, there's, there's other ways of making your running more natural without necessarily having to go the whole way to barefoot. So, you know, as I said, I'm wearing my 
barefoot shoes today. Um, having said that, I've, you know, I've run a 12 kilometer fun run on bitumen without any shoes at all and, and pulled up totally fine. Um, and so, you know, depending on how far along the journey you want to go, you can kind of take it as little or as much as you like, but, but still get benefits from improving your running technique. And mm-hmm. so, you know, uh, I should say you, you sort of question for, is this for everyone? And, and the answer to that is no, it's not for everyone. You know, there are some people who really shouldn't be doing barefoot running and, and maybe not even doing more minimalist running. Um, and those are people with congenital issues, you know, people with degenerative issues in their feet, um, you know, people who perhaps have some chronic diseases, you know, they might have a diabetic arthro- uh, neuropathy, which means that they don't have very good sensation in their feet, in which case, you know, running around barefoot might not be the best idea. It could be a little bit dangerous. Mm. So, you know, there are some people who shouldn't be doing it. And I certainly talk about that in the course, but I think the vast majority of people then getting back to a more natural way of running and getting back to a more natural running style and getting back to more natural footwear, if not even no footwear at all, um, is actually a, a better way to go and can be more helpful for their body. And the, the, the amazing thing I've found as I've gone along this process and teaching people is the amount of people who've thought that running wasn't good for them, um, who've now mm. realized that actually it can be. Um, and the amount of people who thought they didn't like running have now realized that they just didn't like running badly. Um, and so um, that's been kind of a really fun uh, journey is, is seeing people go, oh, wow, like, this is totally different to what I was doing before. This is actually kind of fun. This feels really natural and freeing um, is a really cool process. There was, um, I, I went from wearing like these really tight shoes with uh, orthotics and heels like to try to mold my flat feet to a certain shape the support yeah. of my body and then when I started eating a paleo diet just like you uh, I started looking at um, natural ways of moving and I looked at the feet thing and um, I took my shoes off and I would wear like the Vibram five fingers or uh, the nice. narrow uh, minimalist and I started developing an arch in my foot it's not a pronounced arch but it's, yeah. but it's there uh, when I never had it before and mm. my toes my big toes and my feet like they had um, completely lost the ability to move over the years and I've regained full movement in my left foot and maybe 60% movement in my right right big toe. And um, I've done this barefoot running or minimalist running and I found that when I wear those types of shoes, I run completely differently to the way I hmm. would a shoe that has hmm. a lot of padding and support in it. Can you talk to us about like maybe just the difference of how the, the two running styles are and yeah. uh, absolutely. why the, the, the natural one is more healthy? Yeah, absolutely. Well, you know, it's it, uh, if you look at the, the running shoes that we see people getting around in with, you know, sometimes an inch, sometimes even more than an inch built up under the heel. And, and I always say to people, think of those infographics you've seen about people wearing high heels and what that does to the rest mm-hmm. of their body. Because essentially that's what you're doing when you're wearing one of these running shoes is you're wearing a high heel. And, yeah. uh, and, and so what that does is it changes the whole biomechanics of your foot. So naturally with a, an extra inch under your heel, you're much more likely to land on your heel first. Um, which takes away a lot of the natural shock absorbency within your body. So, you know, one of the things I often get people to do is, is go for a walk or a run on some gravel or some rough bitumen and see what they do. Because you, I guarantee you, if you're doing that without any shoes on, you're not going to slam your heel down into the ground because that's really painful and it puts a lot of force and a lot of pressure back up your body. So the natural way of doing it is to land on your midfoot um, with your, not with them right up on your toes, but just on your midfoot and then ease your heel down onto the ground. And that has so much less pressure. So, um, you know, they've done research on this and studies where they got people running in their shoes on a treadmill and measured the ground reaction forces that were going back up their body. And what they actually found was without giving them any training whatsoever, simply getting them to take their shoes off, taking away all of the padding that was under their feet, they actually had less force going up their body than when they had the big padded protective shoes, which is fascinating. So your body has this natural mechanism, but then also combined with that, then that lift that comes up under your heel changes your whole posture. You know, it it does lift your heels up. It tightens up your calves. It tends to hyperextend your lower back. You tend to bend more forward at that. The mid back and your head comes forward. And so it changes the whole rest of the posture, the whole way up the chain, which means that, you know, it really exacerbates a lot of the postural issues we see um, from sitting too much um, and causes similar sort of issues and, and inefficiencies the whole way, the rest of the way up the chain, because it's just not the way your body's designed to move. Mm. Yeah. What about people who want to transition? Is it just as simple as taking the shoes off or? 
Um, well, once again, this one of the things we talk about in the course, but really to transition, you've sort of got two options. You either transition slowly with your shoes or you transition slowly with your kilometers. So you don't do what I did, which is go out and run 10 kilometers first time you get your new shoes and, you know, think that's going to be okay because that doesn't work well. You end up really sore, which is what happened to me. Um, but what you do is you either... Um, either start with a very short distance and wear your you know, more minimalist shoes or even no shoes and then gradually build up from there. And if you're, you know, for people who love running and they might already be doing 10 kilometers and they might want to keep their training happening, then you can just run the first 500 meters barefoot and then put your shoes on and run the rest of the way. That's totally okay. But, and then gradually build up the length of distance you're doing this at. So, you know, that's what I did when I wanted to run my 12 kilometer fun run without any shoes. I had to start by doing 500 meters without any shoes and then a kilometer and then three kilometers and then six kilometers and, and gradually build my way up to the 12. And by the end of it, I was able to do that run without really any abrasions, without any bruising, without any discomfort at all, um, because I just conditioned myself to do it. So, you either do it that way by building up the kilometers or you do it by slowly changing your shoes. So if you're in a really structured pair of shoes, you pick something that's just slightly less structured and then you might pick a you know, something like a racing flat and then you might pick a more minimalist shoe and then you know, if you really want to go from there, then you might pick, you know, try no shoes at all and, and you gradually transition that way as well. So there's, there's sort of two ways of transitioning, either doing it with the shoes or doing it with the kilometers, but you need to do it slowly. We're coming up on time. We've got one minute left. So the last question has to be, uh, where do people find you, find out, uh, find out about your course and all the services that you offer and if they want to come and see you, where do they do that? Perfect. So, yeah, they can find it all about me at drbretthill.com, which is my website. So they can find all different, all sorts of different information there. Um, obviously, the podcast on thewellnesscouch.com and they can find you know that paleo show and the wellness guys and obviously Quirky Journey and all the other amazing podcasts there. Um, the running course uh, is at theartofnaturalrunning.com um, and they can go there. There's a special one at the moment, so it's like 40, it's either 47 or 49, I actually can't remember, I should know that, uh, but it's about $40 <laughs> odd dollars, um, down from $97 um, so they can sign up and, and get the whole course. It's got like five hours worth of video content, um, interviews with like Danny Dreyer, Kelly Starrett, Kim Morrison, the Barefoot Podiatrist. It's got all sorts of really cool people who collaborated with me um, so they can find that there. And um, I can't remember what your last question was. Uh, oh, that might... your, your practice? If people want oh, to and the practice. That was what it was, yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and I practice at uh, Greenhill Family Chiropractic, which is my practice in the eastern suburbs of Adelaide. And uh, that you can find that at the very convenient short little URL of greenhillfamilychiropractic.com.au. <laughs> <laughs> you can RSI just type it in. It's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Brett, thanks yeah, so much. Good. That was a fantastic. Thanks, guys. I really enjoyed it. Uh, yeah, a lot of fun. That's great. And, uh, quite a beautiful, positive message, and we can't uh, look forward more to your book. Even we're so excited about it when it comes out. So uh, let us know. We'll have you back on the show when it is out. Uh, to tell our audience about it. Perfect. And I'll see you in Brisbane, Joe. And uh, and I'll see you in Kiama for it's going to be okay. awesome. And actually, I should tell people where to find those as well. That's the wellnessbasecamp dot com. They can get their tickets to that too. Fantastic, and uh, we put the links up in the show notes as well, so people can find all find out all about this. And uh, thanks, guys. Yeah, see you around, man. Thanks. Bye, see you guys. This has been a production of thewellnesscouch.com. Check us out on Facebook and join in the conversation on facebook.com forward slash thewellnesscouch. Subscribe to each show on iTunes and check us out on Twitter. The Wellness Couch, streaming wellness into your lives. Whilst the Wellness Couch presenter endeavor to provide accurate and helpful information to their listeners, these podcasts cannot take into account individual circumstances and are not intended to be a substitute for health and medical advice from a qualified health professional. You should always seek the advice of a qualified health professional before acting on any of the information provided by any of the Wellness Couch podcasts.